hunter forces assembled. Void leaping device activated. Target coordinates confirmed. Authorization to deploy. Maximum authorization. Authorization coordination personnel, mechanoid. Activate the mechanical insect swarm forces. Activate the sweepers. Activate the biochemical puppet cluster. Void leap device activated. Meanwhile, outside of Yaohan Lane, the fleeing demon immediately felt the surrounding intense void fluctuations. Don't teleport. Don't send them. The demon mentally broke down, holding his head, shrieking as the blue light continued to appear around him. But it had no effect whatsoever. Almost in the next moment, one after another huge teleportation gate emerged around him. The dense mechanical insect swarm forces and sweepers rushed through those gates. Zaya Xiao, get moving. Lin roared, shooting at the appearing forces. All right. And in the eyes of thousands of spectators, Zayo Zayo rushed into the teleporting forces like a tiger entering a flock of sheep. In the contact station of the Demon Association, several contact officers smiled and spoke into the communicator. Vice Captain, what now? We've urgently dispatched a large number of troops for you. This is the association's last resort. Lin continued shooting at the mechanical insect swarm below, praised them, and picked up the communicator, saying, Good, you've done very well. This support is very timely and substantial. I'll remember you. When I return victorious this time, I will definitely reward you handsomely. Those contact officers were instantly overjoyed. They quickly envisioned the satisfied expression of their demon vice captain upon his return, as well as their own future after being rapidly promoted. After all, having the appreciation of the demon vice captain was an unparalleled honor. Yes, my lord, it is our duty to serve you, and it is our supreme honor. Our loyalty to you is as clear as day. They quickly became excited and passionate. Without further ado, one of the contact officers immediately knelt in front of the communication device, excitedly saying, Thank you for your guidance, my lord. We are willing to serve you faithfully, my lord. Tears welled up in their eyes. Special achievement, occasionally gained by expressing gratitude to hostile members in a way that makes them grateful. Permanent bonus obtained, intelligence plus 5, monster base favorability plus 1. Lin praised them, cleared his throat, and spoke into the communicator. As for the medals, let's talk about it later. But you need to be vigilant. The enemies I'm facing this time are extremely formidable, and they are full of tricks. Remember, now is the decisive moment. There might be someone infiltrating our troops' communication signals, providing you with false information. On the other side, amidst the surging army, the demon surrounded in the middle had completely collapsed and gone crazy. Don't send them. Stop sending them. This is a trap. A trap. If I find out who sent these troops, I'll definitely chop them into pieces. He was almost crying out loud. Grabbing a mechanical insect quickly, he shouted at it. Quick, quickly feed the real situation here back to the base. Tell them, they've fallen for a trap. The voice requesting support wasn't me. Someone took my communicator. It wasn't me. At that moment, a large number of communication signals rang out in the communication facility of the Demon Association. And in the next moment, the signal was connected. Hey, hey, who among you is the communicator? Someone is impersonating me. The orders you received are fake. I'll say it again, don't send anyone anymore. In the communication facility, the communication officers listened to the voice of vice president in the signal, looking at each other. A smirk appeared simultaneously on their faces. The demon lord really had foresight. He just mentioned that someone might infiltrate the signal to confuse them, and here it came. <laughs> One communicator replied sarcastically, not bad, being able to mimic our vice president's voice so well. It seems you've put in some effort. The demon was about to explode with rage. This is so damn frustrating. Listen carefully. I am your vice president. I am the demon. My identity code is 352372. Immediately get your superiors to come over to me. The communication officers sneered and one of them picked up a communicator, saying, Wow, you've stolen the identity code so clearly, and you want to meet our superiors. Haha, ha, are our superiors so easily accessible as you say? Don't waste time with him. Someone who can only impersonate the vice president and pretend to be a bug really lacks intelligence. Leave it to me. I just downloaded a collection of curses from major races from the information database. I was just looking for a place to use them. And then, in the next moment, a series of bitter and acerbic curses, including insults to his ancestors and reproductive organs, came from the demon's side. The insults were quite imaginative. The demon shuddered from head to toe. The demon roared in frustration, and finally, he couldn't hold back, and a mouthful of blood sprayed out violently. Already with a mindset on the brink of explosion from the actions of the human, 
He was verbally abused by his subordinates for more than 10 minutes. Even the strongest psychological resilience couldn't bear it. He clutched his chest, pointed at Lin's head in the distance, and tremblingly said, I can't coexist. Fu, the second mouthful of blood burst out. The mechanical structure on half of the demon's body exploded with countless sparks, emitting thick black smoke. His eyes rolled back, and the demon gurgled with blood, eyes wide open, body sparking, and went offline. Special achievement can be obtained by causing the main brain level figure of an opposing faction to go offline by making their mentality explode through special means. You gained a permanent bonus, all attributes plus 5, intelligence plus 5, happiness plus 10. Meanwhile, in the distance, Titan's head, which had been observing from afar with a telescope, was surprisingly not angry for once. The tentacles behind his head swayed left and right, revealing a relatively good mood at the moment. The female head, satisfied, held the telescope, licked her lips with her long tongue, and said, My daughter has found a good boyfriend indeed. Call my daughter over and use so much food to entertain her. It really makes people excited. What do you think, old man? The titan had opened its sticky huge mouth and said, Sugar-coated shells, flour intestines, wanting to take my daughter away with just a meal, without even a proper invitation. But although he said that, it was obvious that compared to his previous attitude of constantly beeping, he had already improved quite a bit. But the one following them, the Unicorn Demon King, didn't think so. Unicorn Demon King said, But I always feel that the kid's real goal might be to let my niece help him deal with the threat of the Demon Association. I think that guy is using my niece as a tool. No, the female head licked her lips, using the telescope from afar to watch the continuously incoming food. This is food, not a threat. They really look delicious. The titan head also surprisingly did not refute, continuing to watch with the telescope. The unicorn demon king opened his mouth wide in astonishment. No, that's right, he forgot. For beings of the origin level, this was indeed not a threat. At most, it was some disobedient food that could be taken and eaten casually. At the same time, at the demon association, in the deepest part of the inverted tower, within a huge underground container, a massive consciousness slowly woke up. The mobilization of a large number of mechanical creatures within the association finally caught his attention. What's going on? The gloomy voice rumbled from the underground container. How can there be such a large-scale troop movement? The void leap has been activated. Who gave the order? The moment he woke up, his consciousness instantly enveloped the entire inverted tower, seeing the massive mechanical mobilization inside. In the core area, beside the huge container, dozens of servants responsible for maintaining the operation of the container immediately knelt on one knee and said, reporting to the chairman, it's Vice President Demon Lord's order. Vice President Demon Lord encountered a threat that requires a large army to jointly suppress. So, an urgent report came a while ago, requesting urgent support for a large army. So the current large-scale mobilization is a result of that. That consciousness hesitated. He instantly took control of most of the flesh devices and mechanical instruments inside the hanging tower. Mechamagus was his most trusted subordinate, so he gave him the highest authority in the association to handle all matters, big and small. But that didn't mean everything could be done without his authorization. Because such a massive personnel mobilization was no small matter. Almost instantly, he remotely connected to Mechamagus's communicator. Mechamagus, what's going on? How could you allow such a large-scale mobilization of biological troops? You must give me a reasonable explanation. That gloomy voice echoed through Lin's communicator. Lin was momentarily stunned but quickly understood. Anyone who spoke to Mechamagus in such a tone was likely the true boss of the Mage Association. Without hesitation, Lin smiled slightly, once again manipulating his vocal cords to mimic Mechamagus's tone and intonation, saying, Returning, Chairman, I've encountered some trouble here. Once I've resolved the situation, I'll report to you immediately. Brief silence. Silence on the other end of the communicator. But almost in less than a few seconds, that voice resounded again, colder than before. You're not Mechamagus, you've taken off his communicator. Just as Lin was about to say something, the signal abruptly cut off. Almost simultaneously, the once unstoppable mechanical and flesh army that had been leaping over came to a halt. Lin understood immediately. The big boss had taken control of the Mage Association's authority. Lin smiled faintly, but he hadn't expected to deceive the boss with his voice. After all, those who could truly lead an organization were not easily fooled. At the same time, inside the hanging tower of the Mage Association, that consciousness spoke coldly, Mechamagus probably encountered an accident. 
you waste of space. You've squandered so much of our forces and been played like monkeys. You've truly disgraced our mage association. That thunderous voice echoed throughout the hanging tower. The communication officers of the various devices trembled, faces pale, immediately kneeling on the ground. In almost an instant, he remotely took control of all the troops outside the soul alley, including the hunters, mechanical insects, and eradicators. His will instantly descended, locking onto Mechamagus, who had fallen into a blood-soaked coma, and the head that was wreaking havoc. Root level, he analyzed quickly with a cold gaze. So, this time, someone set us up. They want to use a root level creature to show dominance to our association. His gaze was indifferent. Quickly mastering the situation on the entire battlefield, he wasn't concerned about the loss of the mechanical creations. As long as the hanging tower remained, he could quickly replicate an identical army given time. The only thing that bothered him was the root level creature currently devouring his creations. He could see at a glance that although the head was also root level, it still lagged behind those truly representing fear and disaster. His mind quickly became active. Whether Mechamagus lived or died didn't matter much. If one vice chairman died, he could lift another, but a true root level creature was something rare. He squinted his eyes, and if he could harvest this root level creature, even without collecting all the parts of the giants, he could surely unleash significant power right. Unseal my number two body, activate the leap, I want to personally meet it. He squinted, cold light gleaming in his eyes. Almost simultaneously, Lin, who was swiftly hunting down the remaining forces of the Mage Association, suddenly raised his head, immediately feeling the vibrations in the surrounding space. And compared to the previous vibrations, this one was much more intense. Lin immediately sensed a hint of unease. Zio Zio, have you eaten? Lin asked immediately. Zio Zio replied, 80% full, I still want to eat, delicious. But almost the moment she finished speaking, a deep blue halo instantly descended from the sky, directly crushing dozens of mechanical insects on the wilderness into powder. A terrifying figure emitting a terrifying aura slowly appeared in Lin's field of vision. Almost in an instant, the panel of that figure appeared in front of Lin. Flesh creature, powerful combat power surpassing a monarch. One of the most advanced flesh creatures of the Mage Association, a destroyer derived from the giant project. It is also the top-tier defense weapon created by the Mage Association against King-level and Root-level creatures. However, due to the enormous power derived from the giant project, only one person in the entire association can control it. If you encounter it, pray it's not targeting you. Buzz, Lin's gaze went blank. This is going too far. Is this the big boss of the Mage Association? But almost at the moment the system prompt sounded. A giant flesh hand suddenly emerged from the body of the huge flesh giant, sweeping towards Zio Zio. It didn't waste any words and directly launched an attack with an expressionless face. Zio Zio, get out of the way, Lin shouted loudly. But it was already too late. That giant hand arrived in front of them in an instant, crashing onto Zio Zio's side. The immense force made the entire ground tremble, and Zio Zio's body was instantly moved dozens of meters away. The flesh giant trembled, seeing Zio Zio just being moved dozens of meters away, squinting its eyes, and its expression became serious. Apparently, this probing attack had given it a rough understanding of the strength of that root-level creature. Dust rolled away. Zio Zio, who was biting a hunter, stood there dazedly. With a click, one of her teeth broke off and fell to the ground. In an instant, Zio Zio's eye sockets turned to unimaginable red at an incredible speed and an overwhelming sense of grievance surged. Zio Zio, are you okay? Lin asked in astonishment, extending his hand. Zio Zio instantly burst into tears, pointing to her broken milk tooth, saying, Dr. Tooth, beautiful tooth cracked, wah, ah, uh, cracked, wah, wah. Zio Zio burst into tears, very heartbroken. In the distance behind the mountain, the one-horned demon king stared at the scene, his mind buzzing. Almost instinctively, he turned to look at his elder brother and sister-in-law. Instantly, his expression turned into. Those two heads, larger than small hills, sat side by side. Dark clouds gathered above them. Even though their expressions were not visible from behind, the terrifying atmosphere emanating from their silent figures gave a sense that a storm was about to sweep through. This is not good. This is really not good. Because he knew very well how much his elder brother and sister-in-law doted on their daughter. They treated her as if she would melt in their mouths and break in their hands. Whenever she went out, they would escort her from a distance, secretly following her, fearing that something might happen to her. And now, a major showdown was about to happen. The one-horned demon king swallowed his saliva and stared at his elder brother and sister-in-law in shock. 
I think, uh, he stammered. Countless terrifying cracks spread instantly from under the two heads. The titan's head squinted its eyes, roughly the size of a small building, saying, Just now, did you see it clearly? The female head showed a malicious expression, very clearly. At this moment, for the first time in thousands of years, these two heads, which had always been hostile to each other, stood together in harmony. The titan's head said deeply, I am very angry now. The female head ground her teeth maliciously. Me too. A brief silence. And it was in the next moment, under the astonished gaze of the one-horned demon king. Boom. A loud noise. The two heads leaped into the air, and in an instant, their gigantic heads soared thousands of meters into the sky. Gone. Absolutely gone. He swore, in front of his elder brother and sister-in-law, that guy who made their daughter cry. Even if God himself came, he wouldn't be able to save him. That guy really has no sense of proportion. Does he not realize who he's messing with? At the same time, on the battlefield, under the control of that immense consciousness, countless remaining hunters, mechanical insect squads quickly gathered around the gigantic puppet head. With a height of dozens of meters, like a giant stripped of its skin, its grim and crimson tendons were clearly visible. The puppet hunter raised its head, expression indifferent, exuding a terrifying aura. It moved its wrist, overlooking Zio Zio who was crying in the distance and Lin, who was comforting her by patting her head, indifferently saying, you must be the human who destroyed one of my flesh puppets a few days ago. Root level creature, not bad. With such power, you can indeed stride freely in this dark world. But you really shouldn't have provoked the head of my mage association. Today, you've destroyed so many of my flesh puppets. I don't think you can leave today. Lin suddenly raised his head, expression calm. He flipped down from Zio Zio's head. Click. He immediately lifted his left revolver with one hand, pointing it at the enormous hunter puppet in the distance, squinting. Do you know how much psychological trauma a big showdown like this can cause to such a small child? Wow. Behind him, Zio Zio cried even louder. The hunter puppet sneered, cracking the neck joints, saying, Looks like you're brave. What? You're so overconfident. Do you want to challenge me with that toy in your hand? Haha, <laughs> let me advise you. You can still escape now. Before I kill this root level creature, you should be able to live for some time. Cherish this time before I finish off this root level creature. Bang. A shot. A hunting magic bullet instantly landed on the hunter puppet's forehead, exploding into small sparks before falling to the ground. But Lin didn't stop. Bang 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 bang. He continuously pulled the trigger, emptying all the bullets in his left revolver. Seeing this scene, the onlookers in the field were all shocked. Is he crazy? That creature looks tough. Even with that root level creature from earlier, it's not certain it can match this giant puppet. This guy, he's really gone mad. Just now, that slap directly knocked the root level head several dozen meters away. That was enough to indicate a problem. This guy, he's too brave. Are you daring to shoot at me? The hunter puppet squinted, crushing the bullets in his hand into pieces. Lin calmly looked at him, the black muzzle aimed at his head, saying, Well, it's a bit weak, but when it comes to a doctor bullying his patient in front of her, no matter how you look at it, it's very unpleasant. Waiva, Zio Zio behind him cried even louder. Epic achievement can be obtained when the goodwill of a root-level creature towards you reaches trust. Triggering this achievement means you have made a root-level creature your comrade. Please continue to work towards a deeper friendship. You have gained permanent bonuses, root level creatures basic goodwill plus 5, charisma plus 5, constitution plus 5, love plus 1. Lin turned around, tilted his hand to Zio Zio behind him, raised his thumb, and a light point lit up on his teeth. The expression was like saying, don't worry, I'm here, don't cry. Zio Zio wiped away her tears and said, hum. Even at this time, he didn't forget to show off a bit. The onlookers in the field all showed a expression. It's outrageous. It's too outrageous. Is he really confident or is he mentally abnormal? This is like facing an incoming nuclear bomb, not only not running away but also giving the middle finger to the bomb, and not forgetting to be cool for the little lowly behind him. The puppet hunter burst into laughter and said, Interesting, very interesting. Are you trying to increase the favor of that origin level creature towards you? You are indeed a very shrewd human. However, the condition is that you must be able to leave here alive. But do you think it's possible? My body possesses power surpassing that of a king class, and if fully exerted, even a true origin level would be child's play. As for the head behind you, it has just stepped into the origin rank. Lin squinted his eyes, blowing smoke from the gun barrel, calmly saying, Do you really think I only have this one friend? 
As soon as these words were spoken, the puppet hunter burst into laughter, as did the modified hunters around him. Oh, can you summon a few stronger origin level creatures? Do you have a mechanical god up your sleeve? Do you think origin level creatures are so cheap? Are they delivered to you on a silver platter? He shouted and pointed towards Lin. But at that very moment, boom, boom, two loud sonic booms. In an instant, under the shocked gaze of onlookers, two giant heads, taller than mountains, descended like meteors, landing behind the puppet hunter. The hunters behind him were instantly crushed into a spray of blood. Brief silence, the howling wind scattered the surrounding dust. A massive shadow cast from behind. The puppet hunter still maintained his no pose, pointing towards Lin. Two pairs of chaotic eyes, like spotlights, illuminated a circle around him. Isn't this what you wanted? Little by little, Zio Zio ran towards him, calling out, Daddy, Mommy. Complete silence as if time had stopped. The puppet hunter stood there stiffly, looking at the huge shadow that had descended from behind. He subconsciously swallowed. His several dozen meters tall body appeared puny in front of the two enormous heads. You, you were quite arrogant just now. You seem to have given my daughter quite a fight. The puppet hunter stiffly turned around. His gaze instantly turned vacant. In his eyes, the reflection of the two huge heads behind him, with malicious expressions, was as terrifying as bursting magma. Real. Origin level. The onlookers in the vision were also stunned, their minds buzzing and unable to say a word. Because what happened today far exceeded their understanding. A small skirmish resulted in an airdrop of two bigger ones. It's them. Those two head hunters. I will never be mistaken. Several days ago, this family of three wandered near the ghost alley and cleared out several places around. They're a family. They're a family. What kind of joke is this? Is the apprentice so terrifying? When did he make friends with this big family? The comments on the screen exploded at an unimaginable speed. On the battlefield, Lin maintained a calm expression, but his heart was beating wildly. Yes, he had guessed from the system prompts that Zio Zio might not have come alone. After all, he had learned from the grandmother long ago that there were more than just Zio Zio among the head hunters. So when Zio Zio was defeated in that fight, Lin roughly felt that the battle was under control. Really, you absolutely shouldn't. Never, never fight someone else's daughter in front of their parents. You're quite brave, the titan had said. Plop. The puppet hunter's legs bent uncontrollably, and he stared blankly, saying, No, not brave. I just said it casually. Really, really. The female head licked her lips maliciously, saying, You seemed quite happy smacking her during that fight. No, no, I didn't. Really didn't. The puppet hunter trembled, shivering in fear. I, I was just joking with her. Such a cute child. Who would have the heart to hit her, really? Both of you must not misunderstand. In fact, that was just... He widened his eyes, raised his hands, and shivered as he explained. It's a traditional custom of expressing love and goodwill from our devil association. When we encounter particularly cute and friendly creatures, we express our inner goodwill in this way. This is actually a kind of cultural difference in customs, a difference between regional cultures. It's a very friendly gesture. Snap. He slapped a nearby hunter. Just like this, it's as normal as shaking hands when you meet someone. Look, it's very joyful too. The gazes of the two giant heads fell on the hunter beside him. Crackle. With a burst of sparks, the hunter's head rolled to the feet of the two giant heads. The force was too much. Brief silence. He pointed at the hunter's head and said, You see, although his head did fall off, he's still very happy. Um, see how good he looks when he laughs. The puppet hunter knelt there, holding his head in his hands, almost on the verge of collapse, crying, I, I can't save this situation. The female head squinted, didn't you say it was? Quite happy just now. The puppet hunter almost collapsed, tears streaming down, I, I can't fix it anymore. In following moment, the two enormous heads angrily dragged him over. Countless tentacles shot out from the neck, pressing against the puppet of the hunter god at an unimaginable speed, resulting in a violent beating. Boom, 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 boom. For a moment, cries of misery resounded, and the hunter god was pounded up and down, with dust rolling. Do you know how much psychological damage that fight caused to my daughter? Eat first, then fight, fight first, then eat. For a moment, the earth trembled. Rolling dust soared into the sky, and in front of the two titan heads, the colossal giant of dozens of meters seemed like a helpless doll, with no room for resistance. All the onlookers, upon seeing this scene, opened their mouths in shock, their brains blank. It seemed like they also saw the giant being beaten by the two heads, seemingly reaching out to resist. But as soon as the hand was extended, it was instantly pressed down and trampled upon. Slap, 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 slap. 
The rhythmic sound of beating and the cries of misery made people's hearts tremble. It's a total mess. Is this the power of a root-level being? Indeed, one entity suppressing another. Just now that giant was so arrogant. So terrifying. Too terrifying. Meanwhile, in Lin's eyes, information about the two heads instantly appeared. Chaotic evil, chaotic neutral. No need to run. The head of a titan that fell from a higher unknown world into the dark world, filled with endless anger and chaos in its consciousness. The derived madness curse, appearing the moment it emerged, successfully made it one of the most inscrutable root monsters in the dark world. It is rarely clear-headed, but once it falls into chaos, it becomes a disaster for all living beings in the dark world. Chaotic evil, lawful evil. Believe me, sometimes death is a kind of happiness. The head that fell simultaneously with the first titan's head, cursed to become extremely cruel and malicious. She takes pleasure in playing with her prey, and every being she targets eventually dies in extreme pain. It seems that only such malice can restrain the crazy resentment in her heart. However, even so, her love for her daughter remains unaffected, especially her desire to marry her daughter off. Lin, seeing the introduction of the two heads, Lin's heart pounded. Lin stared because from the introduction above, it seemed that the little parents had some connection with those ethereal gods. This involved his knowledge blind spot because that field was really too far away for him at the moment. And if they had a relationship with the divine beings, wouldn't little Lin also be? God, Lin's gaze instantly became hollow, and it seemed that seeing Lin turn around, little Lin stuck out its tongue and playfully licked Lin all over with sticky slime. My daddy, mommy, are very powerful, although I don't know why they ran over. Later, I'll introduce a doctor I really like to daddy and mommy so they can meet. Lin wiped off the saliva on his face, suddenly coming to his senses. As expected, little Lin was still very friendly and cute. With a relationship with little Lin, the two elders should also be very friendly to him. Crackle, crackle, under the fierce tearing of those two huge foreheads, the colossal flesh giant instantly let out a miserable scream and then it was torn in half by that ominous giant mouth from the middle. Run, run, he was terrified, and finally, at the last moment of being torn, successfully withdrew his consciousness from the hunter god's puppet, and this forcibly detached without any steps caused significant damage to his consciousness. In an instant, his consciousness returned to the core area of the suspended tower of the demon association and the servants in the hall instantly saw, in the central container embedded below, a hand covered in mucus suddenly reached out. Crackling, countless sparks shot out. Under their gaze, their president, gritting his teeth, struggled to climb out of that container. The thick cables and tubes embedded in him were torn apart, and he leaped out naked. President, what happened? Your body is still in the transformation period. How did you? The surrounding servants paled. Issue the highest level order to the entire association immediately. Gnashing his teeth, the president, with a hideous face, said, All senior personnel still inside the suspended tower, immediately stop all work in hand. Activate the zero-level defense plan. Simultaneously, initiate emergency evacuation plans and immediately leap and transfer all parts of the giant. As soon as these words came out, all the servants around were shocked. Zero-level emergency plan. What kind of joke is this? Since the establishment of the suspended Tower of the Demon Association, this doomsday level plan would only be activated when the Demon Association faced a crisis involving life and death. Does this mean that the Demon Association has reached the point where they have to use that plan? Hurry! The president roared. Several servants shook all over, rushing frantically toward the communication devices around. Not joking. Their president wasn't joking. The Demon Association had indeed encountered an unimaginable crisis. In various areas inside the suspended tower, all lights flickered crimson, and the piercing alarm sounded continuously throughout the entire suspended tower. Warning, warning, all association members, please note, Level 0 Emergency Evacuation Plan is underway. All members return to their respective positions. Warning, warning, the gate to the outside world is about to close. The suspended tower is about to be fully sealed. Activate the highest level emergency evacuation. Meanwhile, outside the puppet courtyard, the blood saw, rushing wildly through a forest towards the ghost alley, immediately trembled, sensing the alarm inside his body. This is, the zero plan has been activated. Shock appeared on his face instantly. He was once an elder of the demon association, and even during the initial establishment of the association, he had participated in the construction and renovation of the inverted hanging tower. The emergency signal source was implanted in the body of every member at the time when the inverted hanging tower was newly established. 
The purpose was to, one day, quickly relay information to every member of the Demon Association when faced with an insurmountable threat. The sound of that signal, it meant the activation of the Zero Plan, and he was very familiar with the Zero Plan because he was one of the important members who participated in its construction back then. How is this possible? Who has the ability to dare to attack the Demon Association's headquarters? He was extremely shocked, although he had long since left the Association and was even being pursued but he had a precise understanding of the strength of the Demon Association, which was currently at its peak, not to mention the puppet hunters kept in reserve. Even the modified flesh puppet Type 3 had the strength to deal with the majority of crises. What's wrong with you? Asked the approaching puppet lady loudly. Bloodsaw gritted his teeth, muscles all over his body bulging, saying, something has happened to the Demon Association. They seem to have encountered a massive threat. It's unimaginable. The puppet lady quickly walked alongside him, raising her eyebrows, what do you think it could be? Bloodsaw gritted his teeth, I don't know, let's hurry. On the way to Ghost Alley, we might pass the road to the inverted hanging tower. Maybe we can witness something. After saying that, he immediately accelerated, swiftly rushing out of the forest. At the same time, in the wilderness, the titan skull and the god skull were feasting on the massive puppet giant, chewing its flesh with a creaking sound. Woman, have you located that guy? This lord is still very angry. The god skull forcefully chewed on an arm, and a large amount of blood oozed out from between her teeth. She spoke maliciously and ruthlessly. He can't escape, dared to slap my daughter, now he wants to run away. Where does he think he can go? Eating. She turned her head and looked into the distance at the approaching little, her malicious gaze instantly turning teary and affectionate. Daughter, come let mother hug you, you've suffered. Two long tentacles instantly reached out, lifting Little up and affectionately rubbing her daughter's cheek. Like a perfect loving mother, Little, carrying Lin on her back, ran along the wind path. Mom, why are you here? The god skull tearfully stretched out her tongue, licking her daughter's face, saying, Mom and Dad couldn't rest assured. They were afraid their precious daughter would be deceived by the scoundrel, so they quietly followed over. Lin sat on Little's head, pulling two strands of her hair in his hands his expression blank, sanity plummeting. After all, when two extremely powerful and unfamiliar root-level monsters are right next to you, it's really hard to stay calm. But, it should be fine. He's Little's good friend and personal dentist, so it should be. Fine, Little said, hum. Then she joyfully pointed with her tentacle at Lin on her head, happy, waving her tentacles, saying, Dad, Mom, let me introduce you to. This is, daughter's super 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 favorite, awesome dentist Lin Doctor. He's a very good person, very skilled. Every time I go to the doctor, daughter feels very comfortable. Lin immediately felt two murderous gazes fall on him. Lin's whole body's hair stood on end. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Why does it feel like Little's parents suddenly want to kill him? What's wrong, young man? The approaching Titan Skull said, with great effort, Lin managed not to collapse. I am Little's dentist and nurse, surnamed Lin, living at number 55 Ghost Alley, 17 years old, unmarried, have a house, parents deceased, with some savings. Please, please, uncle and aunt, take care of me. Silence. The four eyes, larger than houses, stared at him fixedly, as if they could eat him at any moment. In this situation, he really struggled not to crack. The two skulls squinted at him. What's going on? Something's wrong. Why did the malice from Little's parents increase instead of decrease? Young man, quite good. The titan skull extended a tentacle, squinted, and with a crunching sound of chewing flesh, patted his shoulder, saying, Driving the car, very skilled. Another forked tongue from the other side similarly poked his side, and a friendly mocking laugh sounded in his ear. A letter lured my precious daughter over. Really, very cunning. Deceiving a little girl, riding my daughter very comfortably. Lin's ears kept ringing with warnings of decreasing sanity. Special achievement, there is a chance to gain by persisting for 60 seconds without dying in front of a root-level creature that harbors immense malice towards you. This proves that you are a brave person. You have gained permanent bonuses, spirit plus 5, constitution plus 5, courage plus 5. You actually persisted for 60 seconds without dying in front of two root-level creatures that harbored immense malice towards you. No one knows how you did it, but this undoubtedly proves that your ability to attract hostility has reached the peak. Your courage is unparalleled. You have gained permanent bonuses, spirit plus 10, constitution plus 10, happiness plus 10. No, Lin stiffened there. I'm not happy at all. Where did you see me being happy? At this time, you even gave me a 10-point increase in happiness. Are you trying to make me leave more happily? Damn system. Little nodded vigorously, running with the wind. Hum, Dr. Rides Little, very happy. Little is also very happy. 
She paused for a moment, reciting the lyrics Lin sang when he was racing. Buzz, Lin instantly became hollow, cold sweat pouring down like a torrential rain. Little, at this time, let's not say strange things, okay? Because, murderous intent is already blowing in his hair, the back of his neck feels chilly, he really, is about to crack. Looking at Lin's state, the titan skull opened its bloodthirsty giant mouth with a creak, revealing sharp teeth, and chuckled, patting his shoulder, saying, After eating that guy who slapped my daughter, the two of us, how about we have a private chat? Let's talk privately. Do we have anything good to talk about privately? Could it be that dad misunderstood something? Heaven and earth can testify. Although I do have thoughts about inviting Xia Xiao over to help me solve this crisis, I swear there's absolutely no ill intent. After all, who would harbor unhealthy intentions towards such a cute and friendly guest like Xia Xiao? But looking at the malicious smiles on her parents' faces, there's definitely a huge misunderstanding. Come, my daughter, you haven't eaten yet. Since we have this opportunity today, let's have a feast. Xia Xiao said, hum hum. Meanwhile, on a vast wilderness, the ground began to tremble. Crisis response plan zero, activated, currently in full activation. Accompanied by a series of harsh mechanical friction and the sound of flesh moving, the earth slowly cracked open, and faintly, you could see the structure leading to the upside-down tower breaking through the ground. If someone were here, they would surely be shocked. A towering structure, composed of flesh and mechanical parts, slowly emerged from the ground. It seemed to be an inverted tower of machinery, and at this moment, the surface of the tower was covered with expanding and contracting solid flesh. Zero plan fully activated. Highest defense mechanism activated. Prototype Gigas number 12 initiated. Entering emergency combat mode. Desolate wilderness, the location of the Mage Association. The figures of Bloodsaw and Lady Puppet suddenly leaped from the other side of the rolling black mist-covered mountains, and the entire wilderness appeared before them in an instant. Almost instantly, Bloodsaw saw the towering tower wrapped in flesh and blood at the end of the wilderness. His face instantly became serious. As expected, the Zero Plan is activated. What does that demon devourer want to do? How dare he activate this creation? Lady Puppet looked into the distance at the towering tower that reached into the clouds and murmured, So big. Tall, thick, a pillar supporting the sky, covered with hideous flesh and grooves, surrounded by countless gigantic mechanical arms. This terrifying Gigas was like a world-destroying giant, making it unimaginable that it could be a man-made creation. Seeing its immense size, even root-level creatures would probably have a fighting chance against it. What is that? Lady Puppet asked in astonishment. Bloodsaw squinted, his muscles exploding all over his body, grinning. This is the highest research achievement of our mage association, the first generation prototype war machine built by imitating the Gigas. It almost incorporates all the cutting edge technologies of our mage association over the years. It is the largest creation we can produce at this stage. It is based on the technology of a fallen technological civilization in our dark world. As soon as these words came out, Lady Puppet trembled all over. She also had some understanding of the research of the mage association. In this dark world, the Mage Association was a massive organization specializing in the modification of machinery and flesh. In this field, they were unique. Flesh is weak, machines ascend. This was the motto when the Mage Association was founded. However, as the Mage Association developed, they began to specialize in the two paths of flesh modification and mechanical ascension. As a result, they reached unprecedented heights in the fields of flesh and machinery in the dark world. Lady Puppet asked in concern, a technological civilization. Bloodsaw said deeply, yes, but rather than a technological civilization, it is more like the legacy of that civilization's downfall. It's because we obtain that legacy that we have the later Gigas project. A blueprint, a perfect blueprint, and a true giant. It was probably around 3,000 years ago, during a period that carried the entire civilization's technology, that the giant fell from a higher world with a resounding crash. It was a perfect fusion of flesh and machinery. From the information they unearthed, the strength of the complete giant even surpassed the origin level, reaching a level beyond their comprehension. And because of this, members of the successive demon association were fanatically eager to uncover the secrets of that giant, even at one point considering rebuilding it. Because if they could really reconstruct the giant, the entire dark world would be under their control. But later, due to some terrifying discoveries, this plan was explicitly forbidden by the former chairman. The various parts of the unearthed giant were kept by the group of elders who led the project back then, and the giant project came to a standstill. 
But who could have thought, after the rise of the mind-eating demon, he completely disregarded the former chairman's orders and rekindled that dreadful plan. The puppet lady frowned as she gazed at the inverted tower and said, How does the combat capability of this tall tower compare to the real giant you mentioned? Bloodsaw replied deeply, There's no comparison at all, but it was built using some of the giant's theories. In terms of destructive power, it rivals the origin level. The puppet lady immediately thought of a possibility. She was about to share her speculation with Bloodsaw when suddenly, the earth trembled again, like some colossal footsteps, or the impact of a giant mountain on the ground. Dong, dong, what is this? Could it be? The two were immediately shocked, standing on the mountain, turning to look in the direction of the vibrations. And it was in the next moment, boom, accompanied by a massive tremor. In the distance, in the barren plain, a gigantic girl's head suddenly leaped up from a crevice and appeared in their field of vision. That's the headhunter. Bloodsaw was instantly shocked. He almost recognized the massive creature that appeared in their field of vision. He immediately took up the binoculars and observed carefully, and then he finally confirmed. Yes, it is indeed the headhunter. Could it be that the demon association has provoked such a monster? Seeing this scene, Bloodsaw almost immediately understood the reason for the activation of Plan Zero. Indeed, Plan Zero was established to prepare the association for encounters with terrifying creatures at the king and origin levels. They're crazy. Bloodsaw was full of anger, even though he was in the middle of a chase, as a former elder of the Demon Association. Seeing this scene still ignited his rage. But that headhunter looks a bit smaller in size, and its strength should not be compared to those truly formidable origin beings. He gazed solemnly, saying, If there is only one, we can easily handle it as a prototype giant. But almost at the moment when he finished speaking, boom, another loud noise. A head much larger than the two previous ones suddenly leaped up from behind it, landing heavily beside those two heads. In an instant, Bloodsaw was shocked. There's another one. His gaze immediately fell on the other head, seemingly a female head, which seemed smaller but exuded a malicious and cruel air. Just a glance would send shivers down your spine. Bloodsaw, with a trembling voice, said, It's over. I thought there was only one. Turns out they've provoked two origin-level creatures at once. And one of them is mature. The puppet lady opened her mouth, wanting to share her thoughts with Bloodsaw, but suddenly, boom, it was another loud noise. A head much larger than those two heads suddenly leaped up from the crevice and landed heavily next to those two heads. Bloodsaw trembled with both arms, saying, Three. Three of them. Damn it. Did we accidentally poke a hole in the origin nest? Are you kidding me? The puppet lady muttered, What do you think? The demon association's chances of winning are. The puppet lady, with a dumbfounded expression, picked up the binoculars and gazed at the three origin-level headhunters appearing in the distance. Honestly, having lived in the dark world for so many years, she was witnessing the scene of so many origin beings gathering for the first time. It was terrifying and spectacular at the same time. She carefully watched, and it was in the next moment that she suddenly froze. Because she suddenly saw, among the smaller head, it opened its mouth, and then extended a tentacle. From its mouth rolled out a humanoid creature, then placed it on its head. And the initially terrifying girl's expression suddenly became, Wait a minute, this doesn't seem right. Why does the style suddenly seem a bit off? Why would the face of an origin-level headhunter show such a cute expression, like a little sister asking for attention? And, what's going on with that human? It doesn't seem like the emergency food for the headhunter. After all, who would put emergency food on their head, ride it, and show such a cute expression towards the emergency food? She stared blankly through the binoculars, murmuring, Bloodsaw, look quickly, I've found something wrong. There's an invincible guy, riding that origin headhunter. As soon as this was said, Bloodsaw raised his eyebrows, grinding his teeth, now is not the time for jokes. The inverted tower is probably gone. We need to figure out how to bypass this road and get to Sin City as quickly as possible. No, wait. Look at this. I'm not joking. There really is a human riding that headhunter. Bloodsaw became somewhat impatient. What time is it? Still making jokes. A human. And riding an origin headhunter. Why don't you say a mouse riding a cat? He impatiently picked up the binoculars and looked towards the direction of the three headhunters. In an instant, his gaze hollowed out. His body froze in place as if petrified, stuck in position. That, that is, only to see a human youth sitting cross-legged on the head of the smaller headhunter, flipping a flower rope in his hand, demonstrating it to the curious tentacle holding an eyeball in front of him with a smiling face, like an older brother next door, trying to impress a curious little girl with some strange tricks. But that's not the point. He almost instantly recognized the face of the young man. 
Disciple, Bloodsaw roared in shock. No, this is impossible. It must be his old eyes playing tricks on him. Yes, it must be an illusion caused by his anxiousness. After all, how could his obedient disciple be riding a headhunter around? Yes, it must be an illusion. If his disciple really had such skills, he would have dominated the dark world long ago. He rubbed his eyes vigorously, muttered, and bit his finger to draw a small magic circle on the ground. Should I contact him first? If he's alive, he should be able to receive transmitted messages. As if to prove something, he wrote a few lines on the small magic circle. After finishing writing, he chanted, and a blood-red light flashed in his eyes, pressing his hand on the magic circle. Almost at the same time, Lin, who was smiling and demonstrating flower rope techniques on the small head, suddenly froze. He immediately felt a surge of blood rushing in his stomach. The next moment, he painfully vomited blood into his hands. Is this, Master? Lin was overjoyed. Then he immediately saw that the blood in his hands began to wriggle rapidly, then slowly gathered into several ugly exploding characters. Disciple, are you still alive? Lin jumped up suddenly, overjoyed. Of course, I'm alive. Almost unable to control his excitement, Lin immediately raised his head and shouted to the wilderness. Teacher, I'm still alive. Are you dead? When are you coming back to the store? Your disciple, I'm alone. I'm really scared. Almost at the moment he finished shouting, a series of system prompts sounded in his ears. Special achievement, with a chance to trigger when scaring your teacher away in any way. You took a firm step towards overthrowing the teacher and annihilating the ancestor. Congratulations on obtaining permanent bonuses, mental power plus one, strength plus two, happiness plus twenty. He was full of question marks, looking puzzled. What strange achievement is this? How did I scare my teacher away? This system shouldn't give people some inexplicable achievements. On the mountain, Bloodsaw, Bloodsaw, why are you convulsing like that? Don't scare me. What's going on with you? The puppet lady looked at the convulsing Bloodsaw on the ground in shock. She was completely at a loss. What's going on? Just now everything was fine. Could it be that he's having a seizure? No, it shouldn't be. In theory, can a modified person have seizures? Bloodsaw convulsed empty-mindedly, saying, That guy riding the root level. Headhunter, it's really my disciple. Above the wilderness, Lin looked around in confusion and could only shrug, not understanding. Time continued to pass. A few minutes later, we've arrived. The god's skull grinned and licked his lips. Lin immediately opened his eyes, and his gaze was immediately drawn to a huge fleshy tower at the end of the wilderness that appeared in his sight. He stood up immediately, looking into the distance, his expression astonished. Could it be the Hanging Tower, the headquarters of the Mage Association? the organization that chased after his teacher and himself. Is that it? The rolling dust and mist were dispelled, revealing a huge tower that went straight into the clouds. On it, the gleam of metal and machinery flickered, and huge gears moved the expanding fleshy mass, creating a strange combination of mechanical and fleshy monstrosity. One after another huge mechanical arms grew oddly from the fleshy sack beneath the tower. The top of the tower resembled a giant chimney, emitting black smoke from the post-industrial era. The collision of flesh and machinery. It had a bizarre steampunk style. Hanging tower. Almost at the same time, an information panel appeared in front of him. Flesh and mechanical creation. Unrivaled against pseudo-root source giant. The final creation of the Mage Association. Derived from the legacy of the Star of Death civilization. The prototype giant hanging tower. However, due to only using part of the giant's blueprint construction, it cannot be compared to a real giant. Still, the Hanging Tower, which combines hundreds of years of research results from the Mage Association, still possesses terrifying power comparable to the root source. Almost at the same time, Lin's ears were once again filled with a continuous series of system prompts. Lin stared wide-eyed. He immediately noticed that next to the icon in the lower right corner of his interface, there was now an icon representing the he tried to open it. Instantly, page after page of entries appeared before his eyes. Ten points of free attributes. And this is just because he recorded information about a wonder, and it directly gave such a luxurious reward. And if that's the case, can little little, little little's mother and little little's father all be recorded? You should know. They are source level creatures. Without further ado, Lin quickly focused his gaze on little little under his crotch. Sure enough, a system prompt sounded in his ears. Lin was instantly delighted. It really works. Without further ado, he immediately turned his head and looked at the other two source-level creatures not far away. With just four recordings, it added 51 points of free attributes. This is much more than the attributes gained from leveling up. 
Little Little, holding an eyeball, curiously looked at Lin and said, Doctor, you look so happy. Lin gave her a thumbs up and smiled. Because I encountered something happy, of course, I'm happy. Hum, Doctor Happy, Little Little Happy too. Almost at the same time, in the sealed space under the hanging tower, the three huge headhunters immediately appeared on the big screen. Seeing this scene, the high-level members of the Magic Association all trembled, sweating like rain. They really came. Good. Very good. Since you are here, then I will let you see the powerful strength of our association's top creations. Snap. His hands instantly pressed on a mechanical switch in front of the screen. Prototype giant all activated. Enter combat mode. Target locked. Activate source countermeasure. Giant blueprint fully activated. Phase 1 information construction completed. Phase 2 energy delivery completed. In an instant, in that desolate wilderness, the hanging tower suddenly moved. It stood up slowly, and countless sand fell from its body. A dazzling red light radiated from the huge tower body, and the huge chimney on the top of the tower emitted even thicker smoke. What do you have to fight against me? Even if you are source-level creatures, what can you do against the highest-level research results of my magic association? The world changed color, and the earth trembled. Lin covered his ears, shocked. But it was at the moment when the giant roared. Puff, puff, the sound of breaking through the air suddenly sounded in Lin's ears. Then Lin immediately saw that the titan's skull, with a ferocious mouth wide open, shot out countless thick tentacles like lightning, suddenly rushing towards the giant. Snap, a loud whipping sound. The giant that had just roared towards here suddenly staggered and fell to the ground with its huge body into the sky. Lin had a premonition of something. And it was the next moment. Puff 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 puff. The dozens of huge tentacles that shot out from the titan's skull's mouth suddenly whipped on the body of the giant like lightning. It was a sound of flesh tearing. Sparks splattered. This doesn't seem to be what I expected. Why did the originally tense atmosphere suddenly become wrong? In theory, shouldn't there be a fierce battle between real men? Headhunter vs. Giant. Almost at the same time, a system prompt sounded in his ears, in closed space below. In front of the flickering screen, the high-ranking members of the Demon Association stared hollowly at the image displayed on the screen. The colossal creation that once soared into the sky now seemed like a girl being pinned to the ground, vigorously whipped by a whip, screaming, twisting its body, a pitiful figure unable to resist. Snap, snap, snap. With each snap, the gaze of everyone in the room shuddered. Especially at this moment, the demon lord, who was still standing in front of the screen, maintaining a stiff smile, felt a burning sensation on his cheeks for some inexplicable reason. As if each of those snaps from the tentacles falling on the colossal creation wasn't striking it but was slapping his face instead. President, one of the high-ranking members of the demon, clad in a black robe, trembled and said, I feel like the advantage is not on our side. Didn't you just say? Even if the colossal creation can't stop those three origin-level beings, we could at least have a back-and-forth battle, gaining us a few hours. But looking at the current situation, I think even ten minutes would be generous. The demon lord's breathing became heavy, and a sense of warmth rose in his chest. He couldn't seem to exhale. Don't just stand there. Hurry up and organize the data. Gather everything you can. Immediately prepare the teleportation devices. Hear me. I mean now. Right away. Go. He roared. Throughout the entire base, the piercing alarm sound accompanied by a glaring red light continued to flash. A synthetic mechanical voice echoed throughout the base. Warning. Warning. All personnel with level 2 clearance or above. Please proceed immediately to the number 1 teleportation hall for orderly evacuation. Warning. Warning. The damage level of the suspended tower is 85. 84. It is expected that within 5 minutes, the core body of the suspended tower will completely fail. It's him. Seeing Lin's face, the demon lord's anger immediately surged. It was that human. All this disaster was caused by that human. If it weren't for this guy, the demon association would not have provoked these three terrifying origin-level beings. And now, he dared to come to their base. As if sensing his gaze, Lin, riding on little, smiled and raised his head, pointing towards the direction he was looking. He lightly drew a line across his forehead with his finger, very polite. Snap. The demon lord punched the nearby iron wall. Immediately activate the defense system. Shoot. Aim at that human. Shoot him down for me. He roared with rising anger. Hearing the system prompts in his ears, Lin smiled faintly, looking at the surveillance facilities covering the vast corridor above. He crouched down on one knee, like a cheater ready to pounce. Little, just keep charging forward, leave the rest to me. Our goal is that guy who dared to offend you. Little vigorously nodded, swiftly wriggling her tentacles, and her huge head, like a heavy-duty lowly, rushed forward. 
Her trust and favorability towards Lin had already made her obey Lin's words completely. In her heart, Lin was already a trustworthy and friendly big brother doctor with whom she could communicate deeply. Lefty, don't play dead. I know you've been awake for a long time. Now it's time to use you. Wake up. Lin gave Lefty a smack on the brain. Ding. Left left's favorability towards you minus one. Finally, left left opened her mouth wide, biting onto his right hand, shouting. Don't snap. Stop snapping. Left left, are you scared? Left hand instantly twitched its fingers, showing a expression, saying. Scared? What strange things are you saying? Am I scared? Just kidding. I, I'm not afraid of anything, even if it's a huge brain burst. Seemingly hearing the strange conversation above. Little by little, who is busy plucking out eyeballs, lifted one with a tentacle, curiously looking at Lin. Doctor, heard, voices, speaking. Seeing the rolled up eyeball, left left instantly exploded, backing away with Lin's arm, hiding behind his shoulder, teeth chattering. Ding, left left's fear of little plus ten. Little curiously tilted its eyeball, saying, Hey, it's okay, little, don't mind. My left hand is a bit shy, you'll get used to it. Lin closed his eyes, a smirk on his face. Oh, then it retracted its tentacle, not feeling surprised about why the doctor's left hand seemed to move on its own and was afraid of such things. Because, just like it had many tentacles, it considered the doctor having a moving left hand as completely normal. Feeling the trembling of the left hand, Lin, with an evil smile, grabbed left left's wrist, raising it to his face, saying, Left left, you're trembling. Left hand clutched its palm with the pinky and thumb, saying, No. Where did you see me tremble? I just stretched lazily just now, did I tremble? I didn't tremble. Bullying the soft, afraid of the hard, Lin revealed a sly smile, pointing to the left hand with a malicious expression. The left hand twitched instantly, exclaiming, No, I didn't. Where is there bullying the soft and fearing the hard? I am a perfectly normal mutation. Encountering a completely unbeatable creature, of course, I would unavoidably be afraid. This is clearly very normal. In Lin's vision, his panel appeared in an instant. Astute human apprentice of the Bloodsaw Alchemy Shop, a specialist in deceiving petite girls, although seasoned by numerous battles, he couldn't shake off his tendency to suddenly adopt an obscene demeanor. However, he seemed to possess a high tolerance for pain and mental flexibility. Various anomalies in his body didn't elicit a normal surprise. Recently, it appears he's gradually developed a fondness for the pleasure of both easy and challenging situations. This system is really pushing it. But Lin knew now wasn't the time for this. He decisively ignored the system's grossly unfair evaluations and scathing remarks. Lin gazed at his constitution, now surpassing a hundred, smirked, and thought, bring it on. With such a high constitution, it meant that his flesh would possess even higher vitality and extensibility. Coupled with the skill of flesh catastrophe, he was no longer a fragile entity. He had evolved into an indomitable force. Little one, charged through forcefully. A tremendous roar. The massive steel gate leading to the underground base was left with a gaping hole by little one using its head. Target intrusion detected. Base defense system fully activated. Hunter class biomech is activated. Targets locked. Fire. Almost in an instant, cracks appeared on both sides and above the steel corridor. Automated machine gun turrets revealed themselves. Countless red dots targeting Lin riding on little one. Locked. Fire. The colossal turrets rotated abruptly, spewing an intense barrage of fire towards Lin, as expected of the mage's association. They already have this level of automated defense system. Lin was about to crouch and evade, but his left hand extended instantly, and right before Lin's eyes, it inflated into a pentagon-shaped shield composed of fleshy walls. Bang 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 bang. The dense bullets landed on the shield made of flesh, only to be deflected to the side. Lin was astonished. You can change forms at will now. Stop the nonsense. Hurry up and take out those turrets. Their shots hurt. Lin also knew that now wasn't the time for chatter. With little one's shield in place, Lin instantly retrieved his hunt magic revolver from his bosom. His gaze focused sharply on the approaching machine guns. Bang, bang, bang. Several precise shots. Crackling sounds. Flashes of lightning danced. Those turrets instantly became scrap metal in front of Lin's legendary revolver. Little one. Keep going. Warning, warning, target intrusion unable to be suppressed by magma injection. Immediately switch to defense mode. At the end of the corridor, the magma spray guns held by those hunters exploded with sparks because of overload. Their skin reflected the light of the suppressed flames. Warning, unable to endure, unable to endure. Activate defense mode immediately. Just as the alarm sounded in that split second, a dragon roar echoed from the side of the sky, directly breaking through their fire curtain. 
The scorching breath, seemingly capable of melting everything, instantaneously enveloped them. The flesh on their bodies continued to dissolve, revealing the silver-white mithril structure beneath. Even the highly reinforced metal structure showed signs of melting rapidly under the terrifying dragon breath. Target fire weakened, body loss 41. Armor complete failure. Immediately switch to combat mode. Prepare to counterattack. Too late. In an instant, those hunters, sprinkled with sparks, suddenly raised their heads. In the reflection of their eyeballs, a teenager surged through the wall of fire, holding a half-meter-long black blade in his hand, wearing a polite yet sinister smile on his face. Leaping out, a single slash landed on the neck of the lead hunter. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss the next chapter.